What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another review. I'm here to talk about the Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10 Reunion Part 2. Um, as Housewives normally do, they kind of play this because, you know, really, I think everybody is only watching the reunion to see all the girls dig into Kim's butt, but they didn't bring Kim out to like the last 5 or 10 minutes, so we're really not going to see everything until next week. But um, anyway, let's just get into it. So the episode kind of c continues with Marlo. Somebody asked, um, one of the main things that was brought up between Portia and Marlo was, um, you know, they asked Portia, you know, why did you get mad when Nene, you know, took the fan out your hand and twisted it when you pointed it in her face when that was the same thing that happened between you and Kenya? um you know back in the day um i can't remember exactly what portia said but my whole thing is and i think i had even said this when that happened that you know i think that you know she understands you know how i can't even get my thoughts together what was i going to say I think that now I understand her being mad because the girl did, you know, twist her hand when she took the fan, but at the same time, considering she had went through that same thing with, you know, Kenya back in the day, she should have understood how disrespectful that was to do something like that to somebody. Now, Portia did let Marlo, Marlo know, like, girl, you know, I done changed, you, you know, from since I first came on the show. Marlo said, how did you change Portia said, because I got up and walked away instead of Marlo wiping your hind part. But anyway, they go on to asking Marlo how she got, you know, how she got everything that she has. Now, she did admit that she was dating a billionaire. No, it was not Ted Turner. She said, girl, he bought my house, my mama's house. He bought me a car. He did all this. Um, but she did say that, you know, uh, she has, a, you know, a couple businesses. One of them is Simply Marlo LLC. I do remember her when she, she did an interview was it on the sister circle or somewhere where she said that she did, she had a boutique which was which was the Simply Marlo? But even see, I don't think, but I ain't never heard no Simply Marlo, so I know that ain't where all her money is coming from. Whatever. Um. So we get into Candy and Portia. Um. Now. Let me just say this. Now, you, now we know Portia was just like, girl, I done apologized to Candy a few times. You know, I'm getting tired of apologizing. But I think that sometimes it's hard to give somebody a, a just apology, quote unquote, when you don't know the person that you're apologizing to. When you don't really know what they're, where they're coming from or you don't really know what they're looking for. It's kind of hard for you to give give a just apology, and so I think that if Candy had you know had sat down with Portia and said, "Hey, listen, you know this is how I'm feeling, you know this is what I would like from you," um, I think that you know Portia could have gave a better apology. Now, a lot of people say that well, when you do that, it's not sincere. You can still be sincere and give the person the apology that they that they're looking for. Um, but, you know, Portia kind of gave Candy an apology. I still don't think it was the apology that Portia was looking for, but Candy did say, you know, you know what, well, let's just, you know, make a, a pact right now that we're just going to move forward and, you know, we're not going to allow people to bring up this situation and call, have us to be arguing over it back and forth. So, you know, I think that maybe there may be some hope in the future for Portia and Candy. Um... So that was pretty much that. So we do get move on to Nene and Marlo. Um, you know, Andy asked about the friendship with Candy and Nene. You know, pretty much. You know, because for the most of the show that they've been on, they get busy. They kind of been bumping heads and throwing shade at each other. But Candy says that you know we basically sat down and was like we just gonna try to move forward. And not throw any unnecessary shade at each other. And so they've, you know, been doing pretty good. And so when they kind of go on to 
talk about the whole tour thing. Um, Andy asked Nene, you know, does she, you know, does she feel like Candy could have fought harder for her, or was she mad at Candy, you know, you know, for her getting put off tour? Nene was basically like, no, you know, I'm a businesswoman. I understand how this business goes. Um, so, and then not only that, but. I kind of feel like, because, you know, one of the biggest things was Candy, I think somebody asked Candy, like, why were you so, um, like, so quick to be on Nene's bandwagon, but you've been, you know, having this issue with Portia, and I'm like, well, there's a difference between you saying, girl, go get raped by the Uber driver versus somebody accusing you of trying to rape. Now, both of them are wrong, but I think that Nene, Candy knew knows Nene well enough to know that Nene wouldn't personally wish that on somebody. And even Nene said, you know, I've been, you know, in support of women of domestic abuse for years because can't, you know, you know, Sheree went into this whole thing where, you know, somebody who is a survivor of domestic abuse, I would never say that about somebody. And Nene said, girl, I've been so in support of women of domestic abuse for years. And so I would never personally wish that on somebody. And Nene said, you know, I said what I said, it was wrong and I took accountability for it. Um, and not only that, but it's not like Nene just came up out of nowhere and just like, girl, I hope you get right by your Uber driving. I mean, like, cause like I said before, somebody tells you, girl, go kill yourself. I mean, there's only so few things you can say to come back at that person. Now, mind you, that was the wrong choice of words and she probably could have said something else. But like I said before, when you in the, in the middle of an argument, you going to say whatever it is that you feel like you need to say to win that argument. So... We get onto this thing where Marlo basically says that she doesn't appreciate that Kenya keeps calling her a prostitute. Um, and so this is where she gets into talking about the simply Marlo and, you know, asking about whatever, whatever, whatever. So Portia goes into this whole thing of, you know, um, you know, we don't need to be calling people prostitutes and whatever, whatever. And Kenya says, well, girl, you've been saying that about me for the past two years. Um, because y'all remember this whole thing of Kenya was dating this one-eyed African and he bought her car and whatever, whatever, whatever. Portia's whole thing was like, yeah, but the stuff that I was saying was true and Kenya was trying to come back her because they was even kind of going back and forth in the, in between the time when Eva was coming back on stage. Kenya was just like, girl, I ain't never dated that man, you know, with no, well, first of all, he didn't even have one eye and second of all, I never even dated him. So we get into this whole thing with Cynthia and Eva. Um, so here's Eva's thing. Eva basically says that because somebody asked, well, why did you get so upset about Shamia saying what she said about you and Missy Elliott um, or bringing up your sexual life or whatever, but then you told Cynthia, you know, what you said about Will. Even Eva said, well, what Shamia said was a rumor. What Cynthia said was, you know, what I said to Cynthia was fact. I did meet Will on this day, and he did have a woman with him that he introduced as his girlfriend. Um, Cynthia's whole thing was, you know, I didn't really, really care about whether or not he had a girlfriend at that time. I was more concerned about whether he was dating somebody while we were dating. Which, you know, at that time, I believe he was single. But my, like we said before, he still lied about the fact that he had been single for two and a half years. But he had just had this other girlfriend a couple months before. So, whatever. So, they get into the whole thing with Shamia. Um, and, you know, Eva said that it was messy how she brought it up. Saying that, you know, how did your boyfriend feel about the fact that she was with Missy Elliott? And she was like, you know, you bringing, mentioning this woman's name who's not here to defend herself. Um, and, and she said something about, like, trying to out somebody because, you know, there's been a rumor that Missy Elliott is a lesbian, but she's never came out and confirmed it. And so it's kind of, kind of like outing somebody or kind of making people look at her a certain way. Um, and, you know, Portia, you know, tried to defend Shamia, was like, girl, well, she's not here to defend herself. And she was, that's when she kind of brought up, you know, well, you know. Uh, Eva, I mean, Missy wasn't here to defend herself, and she had even said something about Will being gay and what, what, what. So she was basically like, you know, as a as an advocate for the LGBTQ community, it's never okay to try to out somebody who's not 
who hasn't come out themselves or whatever. So, um, Cynthia, uh, from what I understand, her and Will are not dating, but she's dating somebody who's more her type. I think that, um, I think Kenya said she's met him, and I think, well, ha they haven't met him in person, but they've seen him or whatever. And I think somebody else said that she's, um, they met him. Now, in the midst of this, you know, they were trying to do what they can to try to keep Eva calm because, you know, we find out uh, that she was pregnant. I don't even, I didn't even know she was pregnant, like, because I think when they were in Barcelona, I think she knew she was pregnant because I know Candy was like, you know, she told me I know how to keep a secret or whatever. So, and, before, and prior to that, she had called out to Jackie because she was saying that she was having contractions and jacked out to Jackie basically tells her, you know, is you know, I think that you find to go on ahead with it. The contractions get 10 minutes or less and they start to become painful. You need to come to the hospital, you know, but while you on stage, just remain calm. Don't let them get you stressed out. And so pretty much once she leaves the reunion, she goes to the hospital. So once she leaves, Kim comes on stage. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know. So... I thought that Kim looked good from the neck down. I don't know what's going on with her face and her hair. She's been wearing her hair like that all season. But I thought she looked good from the neck down. You know, her body was nice. Y'all see when she walked, but she was going to the stage for it. was like, girl, she looks snatched, don't she? So, <laughs> let's see. It was, it was extremely tense. You could tell that the atmosphere had kind of shifted when she walked in because, you know, Eva had just left the stage and everybody was, you know, happy that Eva was having her baby. And then when Kim came, everybody was just like, mm, except for Sheree. Um, now, Andy tried it when he told Kim was like, girl, you look younger now than you do did before, but your lips are definitely bigger. He was like, girl, like, when you gonna stop getting your lips done? She said, you, you know, whenever, pretty much was like, whenever I feel like it. So... Um, so they go on to, so they pretty much Kim's whole thing was most of the issues with, well, most of the topic with this was the elephant room. They asked her, you know, why was her and Portia holding hands during that time? Um, and she basically says that she needed somebody to kind of keep her calm so she wouldn't go off on Kenya, pretty much what she was saying. Um, they asked her why did she go off on Cynthia the way she did, you know, telling her just to be quiet and shut up. She basically was like, you know, it was, you know, I was having a discussion with Kim. I didn't need Cynthia's input, you know. She goes on to talk about how she liked Cynthia. Cynthia was like, well, girl, you and Sheree was on the couch talking about how if I wasn't so pretty, I wouldn't have gotten far in life. And Sheree was like, girl, I don't remember that. She was like, well, you were there. Really, it was Kim that said it. So then... When they show the footage, then Kim comes back, I mean, Sheree comes back and says, oh, my mind only remember what it needs to remember. So, you know, Kim starts trying to backpedal and pussy pop talking about how, you know, Cynthia is a beautiful person and I like her and whatever. I'm just like, well, girl, like, that's why I always say you got to be careful of the stuff that you say in these profession confessionals and these interviews because it's going to come back and you're going to have to give an account for what you said. So... Kim was like, girl, I just feel like Cynthia don't have a backbone. She just goes, blows with a wind blows. And Cynthia said, well, I don't think you have no class. Well, that's neither here nor there. So, um, I think they asked somebody like, girl, like, how you feel like you from a higher power? She just was like, well, I think what I meant was I'm on a higher frequency. And so Cynthia says, I mean, Kenya said, well, it must have been the devil because uh, when you came... Something about all of the negativity in the elephant room and Andy says, kind of like when she walked in, she was like, yeah, girl, when she came, I was looking around. <laughs> I was looking around trying to find some clouds and I see that Sheree doesn't have on her storm wig, so I know it couldn't have been her. <laughs> Woo, so this whole thing with Nene and Kim. Nene's whole thing was like, girl, I seen you at the mall. I saw you. I know you saw me. But you were trying to act like you didn't see me. You went and took a picture of my car in the handicapped spot. Then you come to my party talking about, girl, didn't I see you? Whatever. Now, Kim's whole thing was, now we all know Kim took that picture of that car because she showed it to Sheree. 
earlier in the episode, Nene's whole thing was like, girl, I was with somebody who was handicapped. Greg has a handicapped sticker, and the person that I was with has a handicapped sticker. Um, Kim tried to say, girl, somebody sent me that picture. I'm just like, now why would somebody send you that picture? I just, I don't... Because mind you, at that time, Nene and Kim wasn't beefing. They were still kind of cool. So why would somebody like girl Kim? If you're gonna lie, you got to be a you got to be a better liar. So they was you know pretty much going back and forth. Kim was like, "Girl, does it really make you that upset that I didn't speak?" Nene was like, "Girl, I don't care whether or not you didn't speak. I'm talking about all of this BS that you've been pulling." So they pretty much was going back and forth, but that's where it kind of cut off. You know, Nene was about to you know start getting you know a little. A little hype, you know, Candy had to grab her arm and was like, girl, you know, sit back and ain't that serious. So they was pretty much going back and forth. Um, I mean, yeah, that was pretty much how we ended. You know, it wasn't really a whole, like I said, next week is when we really going to get into the nitty gritty with Kim. And they sent, you know, she ran off stage crying. Um... know now side note why they didn't do now remember last week they did the whole thing going back to the past looks of all the women why they didn't do that for kim they could have took about two minutes to show kim's past looks too to show how much she done changed and how much better she looked before, back in the day um than she do now and it's how much she looked young but kim was like girl it must be all this makeup now girl it's all the plastic surgeries and quiet as a kid you don't look younger you just look more plastic but anyway, that's all I want to talk about. Uh, thank you all for watching. Well, thank you all for listening. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow me on my social media, which will be listed in the description box down below. Also, be sure if you've missed any of my previous Real Housewives of Atlanta recaps, the link to that playlist will be in the description box down below. And I will talk to y'all later.